Okay. So you'll get this, and then it comes up with whole IP separately. That's a uh, 10x IPs, I think. Yeah. So there's a little end cap. You just take it off and pop this in, and then you guys can kind of see. And then it comes with slides and cover slips too. So it comes with some prepared slides already. Yeah. Um, onion, right? So you can just put it on your little microscope, turn the light on. You have to put a battery in it, um, and then find and focus, right? And you have a 10x and a four, a 10, and a 40x objective. So you can actually um, use the microscope. And I didn't really consider this super uh, carefully because um, when we got them in the spring, students had already had real bio one, right? So um, now most of you have had online bio one. So we may have to change, I may have to add a little bit to that microscope uh, lab to help you know what's going on. But it's not, it's not horrible. Like I can see, this is onion and I can see individual cells. Unfortunately, and the, the nucleus actually looks pretty good in here too. But unfortunately, bacteria are so much smaller that we're not going to be able to see individual bacterial cells. You're going to maybe be able to tell me what color they stained um, and describe if they're kind of clumped together or if they're just single dots. But to see bacterial cells, we really need a 100x objective on this microscope, and we would have to use immersion oil. And um, then the microscope jumps from being like a $75 microscope, like a little my first microscope, to you know, a thousand dollar microscope. So unfortunately, it's not going to be great for looking at bacteria, but I am hopeful that we're going to do a little work with, I'm going to try to get you some more labs to do with some mold, because mold and fungus is eukaryotic cells, and so you can see those under the microscope as well as uh, what comes with your scope is wool, onion, frog blood, and then um, blank slides for you to make some slides. So okay. and your Carolina microbiology set will also come with, these slides are plastic, but your Carolina set will come with actual glass slides for you to make bacterial preparations. So you will be able to stain this as if we were in class, so. Okay. Um, that's kind of an exciting thing, I think. Um, and it's fun to play with. Uh, so get those lab kits ordered as soon as possible, right? So go to Carol www.carolina.com slash vouchers. And it takes you right to the redeem page. And you can just type in your code and hit uh, in your address and hit go. And then they'll send you an email that'll tell you how many days it'll take for the kit to get to you. Again, as a reminder, since we're recording now, that once you receive your kit, you do need to open it up and first check for anything that's broken because there are glass items in there. Um, the test tubes are glass, the um, slides are glass, and I'm trying to think of the petri dishes are plastic, but some people did get some damaged ones. So open your box, open your kit, kind of take a look at everything. If anything's damaged, you need to email them and they'll send you a replacement. Um, so try to do that right when you get your kit so that when we actually start doing labs, you'll already have all of your equipment, right? You will need a place to keep the kit, obviously away from pets and children, and you will need a place to actually do the labs themselves. And in the videos, go through how to make a 10% bleach solution, how to clean off your area, um, making an alcohol solution that you can use for, you're gonna need some rubbing alcohol, some 70% isopropanol, like from Target or the drugstore, um, not 95, right? Don't get 90%, get 70%. 70% uh, actually kills the bacteria a lot more efficiently than 90%, you need that extra water. So um, get some isopropanol or ethanol and you'll need that and you'll need a small container of bleach to make your bleach solution. Everything else comes in the kit. There's little plastic cups to make your bleach solutions. There's a graduated cylinder. There's a plastic test tube rack that you assemble and put your test tubes in. Um, 
there are lots of inoculating loops, way more than you need. There are cotton swabs. I mean, everything that you need, forceps, everything you need to do the labs comes in the box. And so um, I will post a list. I think I do have a list of all the components that should be in there. And you can check through and make sure that you have everything. And then, like I said, if anything's missing or broken, contact Carolina. They will send you a replacement. So um, that's it. Yeah, and you keep the microscope forever. Then you have a little my first microscope. Cool. That is adorable. <laughs> Put that back to its low power objective, but <laughs> all right. So questions you have from chapters four and five or all the way back to the beginning, things that you want to know for the pending doom next Tuesday. There's so much to start. Um <laughs> All right, so the quiz, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the exam that we're going to have, are you making the exam or is this the exam through the? Um... I make the exams. Oh, so okay. do not copy. Someone emailed me and said they were copying all the questions from Connect and copying all the answers. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. I'm not asking you the questions from Connect. It's okay. The quiz, it's my quiz. That's my regular exam, very similar to my regular exam that I would ask you in person. Okay. Shorter, there's no writing on this one in person, it would be longer and there would be more writing, but um, it's my, it's mine. So watch the videos, study the notes, read the chapter. You can almost think of the connect as almost, right? Um, and I hesitate to say this, but you can also think of the connect, almost think of the connect as like your extra credit, right? You can't get less than 100% unless you don't do it in time. And so it's, I'm counting it for, I forget what, 10% of your grade. And so it's basically a free 10% to boost up your exam scores and or your lab scores, um, mostly just because we're online, right? In person, I usually also assign the Connect as homework and I usually bump that down to about 5% of your final grade. Oh. So um, it's, it's basically a way to force yourself to study a way to force yourself to read the chapter and answer a lot of questions to get yourself ready to take the test, right? But it's, 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 it's I, would, I would say it's mostly extra credit, right? So um, I would focus on that the least. I would watch the videos, take the notes, study okay. the notes, read the chapter. And then obviously you have to do the Connect homework, but um, like I said, it's, it's kind of like extra credit. Pretty much, because you, like I said, you can't get less than a hundred unless you just stop doing it or don't do it by the due date. So, yeah, same for the virtual labs. I think they don't let you finish those without a hundred either, do they? No, we're like 25% or something like that, I think. Yeah. Right, right. So whatever the points are assigned to it, right? They make you do it until you get all the points. So um, okay. I have not yet removed chapter eight. I'm working on it. I'm going to take that off the quiz um, and put that on the next one, as we talked about last time. And um, I don't know what else to tell you. I have a question in regards to um, the microscopes. There's there's different ones, and I realize that different ones do different things, obviously. But should we really focus a lot on what particular microscope does what, or should we just focus on like uh, the electrons are good for, you know, um, viewing subatomic particles, or the scanning one does, you know. So you have, so I would say both, like the short answer is both. It's, it's hard for me to ever tell you not to learn something about microbiology, right? So bearing that in mind, <laughs> um, for the microscopes, you need to know um, uh, all of sort of like the basic features, like what the light source is, what the total magnification is, and the resolution of each of them, and then why you would use that microscope. 
right? So for example, like for a bright, bright field compound microscope, you should know that the maximum magnification is 2000 times. The right. resolution is point, about 0.2 micrometers. And um, it's the light source is white light, bright field. That's why it's not dark field, right? And um, it's used for looking at stained or preserved specimens. Right, live unstained material and preserved stain. Right. Not okay. live usually. Well, you can do it for live, but it's not the best for live. Best for live oh. would be phase contrast or dark field. Okay. And I think I probably mentioned this in the video. Most research labs don't bother with dark field anymore um, unless they have a really specific application for it. Because if you have a phase contrast microscope, it is even better than dark field as far as for live objects and objects that are actually stained with um, specific stains. And the phase contrast microscopes are usually, well, all microscopes are bigger than this, but the phase contrast microscopes are usually a little bit of a larger scope as far as the base. Mm -hmm. And um, my personal experience with a really nice phase, micro phase contrast microscope is we had an interchangeable light source. So we could take the light source out, the white light out and put in a uh, UV light and put in a different um, ocular lens and a filter so that we wouldn't uh, burn the retinas of our eyes out, right? But we could use it as a fluorescent scope as well. Okay. So those phase contrast microscopes are way more versatile than just having a bright field and a dark field. And the phase contrast usually in the condenser, which you guys, it's in this microscope, it's built into the stage. There's usually another device down here at the bottom. In the condenser, you can actually turn it to out of phase so that it's just a regular bright field microscope. So okay. they're a, little, a lot more versatile, but they still can only magnify 2000 times the size of life. So, you know, you can see some things, but you can't certainly see everything. To see inside cells, obviously, yes, you have to use a multiple microscope. For the most part. Okay. Um, and I think that. Um, yeah. No, it's chapter three. Dang it. The microscopes are in chapter three, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I think that picture is in uh, the PowerPoints from chapter three with all the different scopes and probably, I don't know why that's sideways, and probably in the um, lecture portion, I probably went through and hit the highlights. Like differential, you don't need that one. Um, fluorescence, confocal, yes, and then transmission scanning. I'm not gonna ask you a lot about scanning tunneling to actually see molecules. That's more of a chemistry physics thing. Right. Okay. I'm in the middle of chapter four. I'm actually okay. behind, so that's probably why I don't have that many, I don't know, questions. I'm sure you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chapter four is kind of a long one. Yeah, it doesn't look, it doesn't look that, that bad, as bad as I thought it was going to be, so. There is a lot of detail, but I would focus on the things that are highlighted in the PowerPoints and in the video. Okay. Right, like your textbook in particular, what always comes to mind is they kind of go on and on about flagella, right? And I get it, that means that for someone that was a really important part of their um, degree or, you know, we have right. a lot to say about bacterial flagella, but, you know, I can't ask you 10 questions about flagella, right? So try to keep it in perspective. Um, the more time that I spend on a particular item, more likely, it's either a really difficult topic or something that's really important. Okay. So like in chapter four, I would say there's probably a lot more around the cell wall or what they're calling the cell envelope um, 
than about flagella. Okay. Um, oh, I like that picture. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why that one's in there. Or that one. Or that one. Yep. I don't know. I'd watch I'd watch that video for chapter four and take notes off of the video. Okay. And that's what I will do. And the test yeah, is and Day. Sorry, test is Tuesday, week from today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything particular that you want us to know about chapter five, like mitosis or anaphase or? Growth? No, definitely not the phases of mitosis. I think there might be a reproduction question in there, like, um, you know, sexual reproduction in eukaryotic cells is you know, achieved by a result of meiosis, right? And fertilization, uh, like sort of a general question like that, but definitely not uh, phase. Okay. I remember some of this actually from bio a long time ago, so. Yes, and for the organelles, those are all, for the eukaryotic organelles, those are probably gonna be lump questions, right? Which of the following is mismatched? which the following eukaryotic organelles is not structure matched with function, mm -hmm. which of the following is not, um, yeah, there'll probably be questions like that because I can ask you 10 things at once, basically. Okay. The more thoughtful questions for chapter five will be on this part, the part that I actually lectured about. Okay. Can I change it to student view? Excuse me. Okay, so I thought. Leave student fear. Good luck. Oh yeah, reminder, if you don't have your accommodation letter, um, you need to get it to me as soon as possible. Right? There's no letter, uh, no extra time. What was that? I'm and sorry. I've received a few, but not. Uh, <laughs> so some people have uh, accommodations for learning disabilities. Oh, and okay. then they got a, a letter through the disability services office. Um, and in college, there really isn't much um, left of those services. Um, occasionally, a student will require a note taker. Those are usually students that have uh, a hearing impairment or blindness impairment or visual impairment. But mostly what's left um, is uh, time and a half on an exam, basically. Oh, OK. I just wanted to make sure. I'm like, oh, I didn't. I want to make sure I've had everything. Okay. Yeah, no. And most people don't actually need it. It doesn't turn out they actually need it. But um, usually for the first test, everyone's very uptight about, you know, having to read the questions because it's tough because you have to read the question and then process it, which will take you a good 10 to 15 seconds. And then you still have another 30 seconds, which doesn't sound like a long time. But think about when you're exercising and you have to do a particular exercise for 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Think about how long it feels then, right? It's the same amount of time. It's just a different part of your body, your brain, instead of your muscles, right? So students often panic. And someone also asked me, it was a bio one student yesterday, um, it's not set up. You guys have had experience, I assume, in Canvas. So it's what you will you only see question one question at a time, but it doesn't automatically shift to the next question after 45 seconds, right? So there's some questions you're going to be able to answer like that. If you've studied, you're just going to be like, oh, I know that, and just answer it and move on. 
And then there'll be other questions that you'll be just be like, I have to read this like six times because I don't know, right? The, the, the key is not to panic because there's plenty of time. You just have to sort of mentally budget the time, right? Okay. So um, that, that's the hardest part. And after the first test, it's of course, it's better. Okay. That first one's tough because I really doesn't really know what to expect. But after that, yeah, they're all pretty much the same. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to ease and all those emails I'm going to get next Sunday night, right? I don't know how to study for this test. What should I do? What should I do? Watch the videos. <laughs> okay. Right. Yes. I'm not usually a big true false. There won't be a lot of just straight up true false questions. The, tr the type of true false question I usually ask is that example that I gave you for the eukaryotic organelles, right? I'll usually ask you which of the following statements about, let's say, since we were talking a little bit about flagella, if I said which of the following statements is not true about flagella or which of the following statements is false about flagella, bacterial flagella, prokaryotic flagella, I'm trying to be very specific, right? And then I'll list four or five things, right? They can occur in groups at one end, one pole of the cell. Um, they consist of you know, a hook, a filament, and a basal body, a hook, and a filament. Um, they're composed of microtubules in arrangement of nine pairs with two in the center. Um, they're used for motility. Um, chemotactic, chemotaxis, and motility, right? Um, and then I would ask you which one of those was false. Okay. And one of them was false, just in case, you want, <laughs> in case you're wondering. One of them was clearly false. One of them was description of a eukaryotic flagella, right? So those are, that question is like, uh, do you know the information and can you discriminate between eukaryotes and prokaryotes? Okay. But then there'll also be just questions like, you know, which of the following is not a benefit of fungus to humans, right? So some of them will almost be intuitive if you've watched the videos, read the book, and studied your notes. You'll be like, oh, yeah, clearly. <clears throat> and I'm probably, I don't, shouldn't say that out loud, but I'm probably looking at my. A group right now, right? So <laughs> the people that routinely come and ask questions and you know uh, participate as much as they can usually uh, do better on the exams than people I never hear from, but not always. And anything else? I think, uh, I don't know. I think I'll probably give people about um, a week and a half to two weeks to get those lab kits. So I'm, I would expect like planning ahead, right? I would expect that you would want to be, we'll be starting them around the end of February, that last week of February. Now the tricky bit is um, we are still scheduled for a spring break and we have to, re, you'll have to reconstitute bacteria and then keep them growing for about two weeks. So most likely I'm gonna to try to do the microscope labs before spring break. Mm -hmm. um, so from the end of February, so that last week of February through the first two weeks of March and have that microscope, like lab safety, a lab safety quiz and the microscope labs be due, the early microscope labs be due before spring break and then the reconstitute the bacteria and keep them growing, we'll probably start those after spring break because those take us, those will take you about two weeks max if you do something like every day. So then we'll be finish up, finishing up labs like in the middle of April, I think. So just planning ahead, right? So if you're thinking about taking your spring break at a different time because you're taking all online classes, I wanted to warn you ahead of time. Um, I'm expecting that we're not doing lab the week of spring break, um, but we will be doing lab the week before and the week after. So okay. I just want to put that out there in 
video format and then also in an announcement format um, <laughs> so that people can start planning accordingly. I have a question on, I'm one of the people who are catching up on the prerequisites, um, but for, cha for chapter two, for the part that's more like, or like biochem stuff, mm -hmm. um, how the, the chapter goes into a lot of detail. I'm wondering how much of that is important or if it's the, more the big picture. So you won't have to identify any of the molecules. Like there won't be any pictures on this test. That's something I do in bio one, but not. Uh, in micro. I would focus on um, the functions of all the different organic molecules because that's probably more likely the kinds of things I'll ask, right? Um, but I would expect a fair amount of detail. So for example, I would be very comfortable asking you um, what are the components of a nucleotide? And I would be very comfortable asking you which of the nucleotides is not used in DNA or which of the nucleotides is only used in RNA. Um, and I'm kind of thinking about that right now because the bio one students asked me a lot of those questions yesterday. So and that's the only reason I'm thinking about nucleotides, but it could be for proteins as well, right? I might ask you which the following is not a function of proteins and cells. Um, so I would try to focus more on the functions of those organic molecules. The inorganic part will just be definitions, basically, it would be easy questions that, you know, you either know them or you don't. And, um, but they're not particularly complex because I'm not asking you like to calculate the molarity of something and then compare it to something else, right? It's just kind of, you know, this stuff in general. Do you know what an atom is? Do you know what types of bond, chemical bonds can be formed between molecules? So sort of the, I wanna say, the basic stuff, but I don't want you to think that I wouldn't ask, like I wouldn't ask about Van der Waals forces, but I would, I would ask about a nonpolar covalent bond. <laughs> so it's hard, hard for me to say what that level of detail is. Maybe if it was one to five, I would say like three and a half to four level of detail. All right, that's helpful, yeah. Try not to focus too much on that chapter because it's just one of the sets. Right? I would consider the, the new material and the more relevant material, the things that are in chapter three and four and the end of five, right? So um, just don't, I, I get it. It's hard to know what you have to remember from before, but I feel like if I, if we, I've done it both ways. So I've included it on an exam and I've not included it on exam. And I do find that students do better as we go through metabolism and replication and transcription and translation if I did include it on the exam. So it's pain, but I feel like it's, it's worth it. It'll help you later on next week, right? We're doing chapter eight, chapter nine. All righty. Anything else? Anything in particular? Any stuff about cell walls, cell membranes? I think what's in chapter five? Fungus. Can't remember. It's been a while. I kind of forgot. Are there? Um, I know there's a note outline for four. Is that did I make one for five? I don't think I did. Five, you have to watch the videos and kind of make your own, right? <clears throat> all right. All right, that's all I know. Um, remember, I have office hours today from 12 to 2 and tomorrow from 11 to 12 for everyone. So if you have questions that you think of tonight, um, before I see, I mean, the exam is open, will be open all day on Tuesday next week, but I'm going to be focusing next week on uh, 8.
probably in our discussions and sort of giving you a rundown of, I might post a note outline for chapter eight, but um, sort of a reminder of the things that you need to know from chapter eight, maybe questions you should be able to answer. Things like that. Mm -hmm. and get your lab kits. That's all I think, that's all I know. Okay. <laughs>